All right, back again. So we're going to start that from the very top. It's going to be quick, but it's going to be in depth. Um, so the Google Sheets are getting a revamp. I've done most of it already. But so this is going to be our landing page. You can click on any of these and it's going to bring you right to the page. Standings, like I said, is going to be changed. It'll look kind of more like the power pools with the red line across for the playoff pitcher. Conference names are going to be gone. Division names will stay. And it's likely the Patrick Swayze Red Death, uh, red death Truck and the Maroon Van. We're dropping the Texas size 10-4. That's what we're going to do. Uh, so one, two, and three. Those will be the divisions. Nothing more I needed to do there. And there's also a home button at every single tab. There's a home button in the top left. So we have three teams here that are going to be a part of the expansion draft for season four. And then with that, you can move along through the whole league with it, with all the tabs. The team logos are not linkable. So if you click on the one, that's all that's going to happen. It's not going anywhere. League recaps. This is going to be a breakdown. You can choose up here at the top, choose the year that you want to see what the recap is, but it'll pull all the data here. So like most one timers in, this, in a game was 22 between me and Golden Gopher. Uh, most face-offs was 35 but between Firebirds and Sean Bell and Thunder Bay Pike. Most pass attempts, 119 with the Ducks and Grand Huron. Uh, most combined goals was 14 with Anaheim beating North Bay Knights 12-2. Uh, most penalty minutes was Surrey and Halifax for 12. Uh, most total shots was 53 between Charlestown Chiefs and Dinkelberg. Uh, the margin of victory was 2.29 goals and these are the home records as well so i'm gonna have this here and it's gonna be broken down i'm gonna load the 95 statistics as well as best as i can but we'll go from there next one is the tribes so this is based on all the tribes this is the all-star breakdown we're gonna have 15 teams we're gonna do a round robin i'll have more to that but that will be during our all-star week uh midway through the season so this here we have the tribes at the top waterloo tribe is the only one we don't have a a logo for but it's okay and these standings here these are the all-time standings like who are as a coach where are you standing up against everybody else and you can see everybody else's records are all here and it gives you an idea where you stack up against everybody in the league then also how many games have been played as well so some of them i have to change like t-baggers is not there so troy hill will have his own but then the most important things over here is you've got your tribes so, so far, the statistics here you see here is only the high, their winter classic. It's their, all the records of their players, how many goals they scored, goals for, goals against. And I think that's the only tournament that they have is their winter classic. But then also like that, you have Segathon. You'll flip over, Segathon's there. But then you have to go over here to choose their, their breakdown. So like lifetime, all-time winning record for Segathon. And then you can do the same thing for regular. Then you did the same thing for playoffs, and then you do the same thing for doubles. So it gives you a breakdown of everything here. But you have to click on one of them. So if you click here and go high, you have to go here and click the one that is associated with high to pull up the statistics. Standings, we already went into it. Now the power pools will be here. Uh, the statistics and everything will be put there. So since the margin of victory was 2.29 last season, that is the home advantage to start off with. We'll use that as a default anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then all the teams here at the bottom, some to trash and the five expansion teams, uh, the five expansion teams will all be put in there. They're all got zeros, but we'll go from that. So whatever your final ranking rating was, that's what you're gonna start the season with as well. Next tab over is the team tab. This is not gonna change. Uh, I maybe have to adjust the schedule, um, the schedule thing here to populate it. In 1997, you choose your player here. It's an Albany Mohawks, for an example. They have their 30 out of 30, their stadiums. This, the graph here in the middle now is prompted by when you choose the team. So it's not like you're going to be here and see Albany and then you're going to also see North Bay or something like that. It's all tied together, all the teams, team statistics. So for an example, we'll go to Thunder Bay because they were the Brulee Cup champs. Populates here. You have his playoff record, his Brulee Cup win. No prospects, his all-time record. All his team statistics as well. Cliff Rounding's not here, so I have to adjust that as well. And then it's his rankings. So if we change this here to 1996, which was last season, you can see it all here. He's got his league rankings, his team statistics, 
and is the league average. So you can kind of see where he's stacked up league wide. And you see it here in the middle, it changed as well in this team stats. Sean Bell, I'm reaching out to you right away. If you want to write up the, the articles again for each team, please do so and send them to me so I can populate them in here as well. Just kind of like a recap of the season for each team. If you could do that, that'd be great. Uh, you have the team overall for that season and their power ranking finish. Uh, next one is the player one. I think Paul Ranheim doesn't have a pitcher. I think that's the reason why. Possibly. I have to figure that out. Something's something's not working there. Med Mohawk might not have a photo as well. Who does have a photo? Phil Housley. There we go. So now that I've populated out the career trajectory, you can kind of see how the players go throughout their career. So let's choose, and you can see them over here as well. 2016, 2006 is not the lockout. I have to fix that. And when they were drafted, their statistics for the season and their awards. So, and then you also got the player and the goaltender. So if it's a player, his statistics will be here. If it was a goaltender, for an example, uh, let's go with Blaine Locker or, yeah, let's go with Blaine Locker. He didn't have any uh, signings because he was a free agent signing, but it was a 96. So you go to 96, he's with Autobahn. And you see that he had his goaltender statistics and also his player statistics, but doesn't have his career projection because... Some of these statistics here, I have to change this formula here because it's been modified a couple times. But it gives you the season breakdown for that player. Another person and who he was picked up by, he's with Autobahn right now. And that, that's how the player one works. Then you move down here, you can do the player projections. I have to change the player images again. But you can actually see how a player ranks in the league on their statistic, what their statistic was based on the league average. And then you also have the trajectories over here on the side, which you can look to see how it is. So this the same thing is like above is you got your goalies alone and you got your players alone. So if you have three players, you'll see how each one of them stacks against each other. And it says down here, player left is Taipei, player in the middle, mullets, player on the right, ducks. So you can kind of get an idea of how the trajectories are. And you can also change it over here. You can go based on, I want to go on a per game basis. Hopefully it changes, maybe. Maybe not. So you got the per game basis. Then you can also change like I want. That's oh, the league averages. So I have to. There's something I had. I messed up over here that screwed up all the statistics. But you can get an idea of what it's going to be like over here. So player Fred Brathwaite. I'm going to have to clean this up a little bit. But you can see here Fred Brathwaite's a goaltender eliminated there. And there's the goalie statistics. So we're going to have to change that. But it's not per game. We want total stats. And you can see how the total stats are. League leaders. It's going to get cleaned up as well, but everything's going to be pulled from one area. I'm cleaning everything up on the back end, but over the holidays, I'll be able to do that. Uh, new categories called win probability. So this is based on the season of 96, not based on what had happened at the end of the season. This is like if you want to go back and see how did you perform over the whole year and what was the light, highly likelihood that you would have won with your roster. So like here. This was the Bruley Cup final, Thunder Bay and Troy Hill. Uh, the likelihood is that it was expected two and a half goals per game for Thunder Bay and 1.79 for Troy Hill. But you also, you can see here, what was the more probability? The more probability would have been two ones, three twos and everything like that. The likelihood of uh, a 6-0 win for Troy Hill was less than 1%. And the same thing with Sean Bell. It was more likely that he could win five nothing over Troy Hill, then Troy Hill would win 5 nothing over him. And it gives you the breakdown for all the teams here. It's based on your um, the league averages. And it also gives you your over stats or your under stats. So it's, this is your offensive production and your defensive production. So you can see here, like say Sum Sumter, very low scoring, but then also had very bad defense at one point as well. So that just gives you something kind of expected. You can change it to 95 as well, and the 95 statistics would change. I don't know why this is all being prompted up, but it should have been pulling up for 95. I'll fix it. Don't worry about it. 97 is the same thing once we fill all the 97 stuff in, and then there's 96. So we move over to the records. The records have all been updated. So these are all current record holders. Nothing's changed out of here. I'd like to see some of the, the old teams like Kalorn. I'd like to see them gone off of this list. So uh, Mike Vick. With over here, that's fine, because but it's his old team. It doesn't really matter. I'd like to see Kalorn's gone, for sure. 
and it's nice to see other teams in here like even for myself the only thing i have a record for is most penalties in a game halifax tied me in it so technically i can actually put two tied here because i know that he had eight in that game there we go and the year doesn't really matter so much because it happened in 95 and 96. so we can actually maybe even just do this so that we have them both that'd be easier then we have a bracket which i've cleaned up and it's going to be adjusted again this is all going to get cleaned up i didn't touch the really uh, the prospect cup because that's still yet to be determined but this is what i was talking about that we're waiting for games to be completed uh all-time leaders i got rid of the photos because it took a lot longer for it to load but this gives you still a kind of the idea of what's going on with the prospect uh the all-time the all-time leaders awards empty again we'll wait here's the draft so if you need to know anything about the draft here's the value of your draft picks here's the draft picks that are still waiting to be determined which we need to know so we can start the draft and these are the trades that had happened the ones that are in blue have already been determined because the players had a finishing mark in the season and then the ones that haven't is because say like the Gaelic Gopher is still playing in the playoffs he traded his draft pick which we don't know what his draft pick is because we don't know where he's going to finish and then over here we have McLean who traded that pick to Jay Pizzle which we don't know which that pick is because it's still the Gophers one and it's the same thing over here Gambini's pick uh, from McLean to Gambini well actually I could probably do that one it's the second round pick trades their second round pick yeah so it's the second Sunnyvale this would actually become now at Gambini there we go that one's done too so we could change that one up yeah, that one's done but this one here i have to wait um and then i have to fill out some over here as well i think uh where is he with charlotte yeah here we go coach mike he's that one coach mike he's that one that's it and then you can go down and see other seasons of where players were drafted so all those things on the team tab are getting pulled from here uh draft available players so these are all the players that are in this draft 1997's draft available players you can see there's some good players it was ed jovanowski that's who i was trying to remember miroslav satan's in there you have jo jo uh, jeff o'neill you have yuri lettinen you have peter sakura you have nicholas sundstrom you have steve sullivan brendan witt you have saku koi obviously you got shane doan uh robert svella kyle uh, mclaren who else do you have in this draft this is so deep adrian coin if you're looking for defensemen you got ryan smith the captain of the oilers you have stefan yell who's played pretty good yannick perot who is great at face-offs you have jamie landenberger who helped the Tro uh, dallas get to the stanley cup i think uh brian holzinger yeah he played with buffalo but still it doesn't matter uh you got john clem who can help out on defense you got scott walker who played for nashville you have um and this guy's this guy's oddball I, I think he played for san jose or la and then you have rene corbet and then goaltending wise uh, and then you got radic dvorak but goaltending is pretty grim in this this draft class you have the show garth snow is probably the most recognizable Corey schwab wasn't too bad um cory hirsch played for vancouver for a couple of years he's he's pretty solid i guess if you're looking just for a stopgap the draft classes that are going to go off are next seasons for 98 and 99 you got jean sebastien giger you got arc andre fleury you got roberto luongo you got some you got some star goaltenders you got goaltenders that become league mvps the ones that carry teams to stanley cups are all going to i think they come out in the 98 or 99 or early 2000 so in the next couple of years teams are going to be looking to stock up for their goaltenders next one over is our player database so this is all players that are available from 1995 to 2022 you don't see the years up here the only one you'll see is the green one which is the year we're in the rest of them are all filtered we have the 2005 season which is a lockout but if you scroll down you can see it's all alphabetical at least for the years and then you can start seeing players start shifting to the left so if you really want to you can just go like this you start seeing it and then like say in the example you have north bay with the agar you can see that he plays there over here he was in the khl 
and then you keep going down unless there's another Yarm or Jagger somewhere. I don't know. I might still have to do some cleanup. And then you keep shifting over. You keep shifting over. And you can see over here that there's empties. But then you also see who's a free agent. Who's a rookie. Because it's based on this cell right here. This one right here is the spot that it's triggering whether they're a rookie or not. Obviously, all the other players that are rookies for future seasons, you're seeing more and more rookies here, less and less free agents, is because... They start retiring, and then, look, they're all rookies here. Because this cell right here, oh, well, this cell right here is empty. It triggers them as a rookie, but they're actually a rookie over here. So it's just to give you an idea who's a rookie and who not to touch. This 1997 draft available players, it's not you won't go in here and be like, oh, this guy's available because of this. No, it's on this tab. Active players. These are all the players on all our league players' teams. I still have to add Albany in here, but everybody's rosters. If you're looking to want to see what your roster looks like, here it is right here in a snapshot. If you're Sudbury, this is your roster right here. You want to find out what your team's overall is going to be for the season. You take the total of these guys here, which is 892 divided by 12. That will give you your team overall. And then you can kind of give yourself a projection going down the road. Like Providence, they got Mike Medano, who's the stellar, who's another player here. Uh, Thunder Bay. I do possibly think the way Thunder Bay is going to roll it this year is, yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking more and more into this, um, and I got a feeling the way he's going to do it. He's The reason why he was able to let Brasso go because he knows Hackett plays good for five years. Uh, Owens Lynch, he's, he's good with Racine, but Racine retires, he's going to fill it in. Maybe he'll sign a defenseman and then he'll take over for Racine when Racine retires. Pal LaFontaine will be a starter until Pal uh, Zygmunt Palfi becomes 100. So he's got a plan. And I know that it's everyone's thinking the same thing. Um, then you start seeing how everybody else's teams are. If you see a gap like this, there's a gap right here. They are the same rating as the year prior. So if there is a gap between any of those years, it's because there would be the same overall they were the year prior. So that would be for if you're going over here into the player database and you saw a player and there's a gap between them, that's what you do is you take the year prior to give them their actual value because they could have been injured for the season. They could have been um, the injured. It's mostly they could have been injured or they took a leave of absence from the NHL at that time. Or kind of like Mary Lemieux, he stepped away, then he came back. So the thing is, instead of penalizing player for not having Lemieux, Lemieux would be 101 for all those seasons because every previous year would have been whatever his rating was. I'm not penalizing guys in this because it would be unfair and I don't want guys to leave because they're like, hey, my guy got kicked out because his rating sucked. But then you can kind of go through and you can see everybody. You can also go all the way at the top and be like, okay, I want to see what their attributes are. I want to make a trade. I want to find out who the heck this is. You can click and find the person alphabetically. These are all players. It'll pull from the player tab. Or you could be like, you know what? I'm going to make a trade for Ron Francis. And you just type in Francis and then click. It'll populate this area here for you based on the most recent year. It'll take a little bit of time. It's, it's searching. But here, it goes from 95 all the way to 2004. You can see his overalls. And you can also see his ratings. So some people have been asking, what's the 11 stand for? Oh, 11 or this, or what's HF? HF is hand and fighting. There's no fighting, so it's H. Only H. If it's an odd number, it's they're right-handed. If it's an even number, they're left-handed. So that's basically the current players. The rating database, this is all the players' ratings in here. Instead of like seeing this over here in the corner, you just click here, search for it if you want. Or you can do the same thing again. Click here, look for a player. I want uh, Alex Debrinket, for an example. You'll search, pull up all Debrinket's ratings, and you can see everything here. Pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, player summaries, all this stuff here, don't bother. This is the stuff I utilize in the background to populate all this fun stuff. And then the last one is the fantasy. If, you, if we wanted to do a fantasy sport hockey league in a way, you could use your stats here. So this is based on the teams. I'm working on trying to create one for the players, but here it can show you like Sumter was the worst fantasy team based on these points associations throughout the season. 
Uh, Thunder Bay, obviously, best team in the league, had the highest score. Then you see guys that were like in the middle of the, the pack, like Renfrew, uh, Adolph, myself, Grant River, Autobahn. And then, then you got Shithawks. And then like you look at a team like Minnesota Muddles, who were a strong team, but they were actually in the middle of the pack, fantasy-wise. Um, who's another one? Troy Hill, 349. He was on the, t the smaller end of it all. Um, Dinkelberg, 77. The Charleston Chiefs, 196. You can kind of get an idea. This kind of gives you an, a picture of moving forward. If a, play a team's kind of in the green, they're more likely to be a playoff team. That's kind of where I'm going with this. And, like, for Troy Hill to be at 349, there's something maybe wrong with the color skew in here. Let me see if there is. Uh, we'll just highlight from here to here. And we'll bring this down. And we'll do some conditional formatting. And it's up. Oh, that's why, because it doesn't do the same range. We need to go to 35. And it's 6. See, now, okay, the color's changed. So now he's in the green, which makes sense. Hello, Brandon. So other than that, if you need any questions regarding it, I'm going to be working on the ROM and finalizing. I know a few guys have been asking about it so that you can practice with it. It's Hopefully I can get it done before the Prospect Cup's done so that I can have it ready for the draft. And then it's just plug and play kind of thing. But uh, if there's anything else you guys need, I'm Ultra Magnus. Keep watching. Keep playing. Peace out.